This is a sizing die like no other. What do I mean by that? Watch the whole video. Gavin Gay here from ultimatereloader.com. I'm back with Travis Fox. Travis, thank you for joining Hi, us. Hi, Gavin. Thanks for having me here. What we have to talk about today is the Short Action Customs Modular Sizing Die. This is a die like no other. Travis, who is this die for? The Short Action Customs Die. This is going to be for the discriminating shooter who's looking at the ultimate and concentricity out of their reloads. Another thing it's going to give you is flexibility and repeatability. It is. Yeah. What you can see here is the die in complete disassembled form. We've got some unique parts, some unique components. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to go over putting this die together. We're going to show you some fancy diagrams that we have to show you all of the individual parts and pieces, how they fit together, how they function. We're going to do some sizing and then we're going to validate the results. But before we put this die together, let's talk about those internal parts and how they fit together. So we have a few diagrams to look at from Short Action Customs that are going to help illustrate just how different this die is. Now just as a reminder, usually a sizer die has essentially a rifle chamber cut up into it. It's going to size the body, it's going to bump the shoulder, and it's going to size the neck. And then there's a spindle that is somehow attached with like a Lee die you have, kind of a collet system. With traditional dies, you have a threaded spindle that goes in. You might have a removable expander ball, that kind of thing. This is a completely different world. Very much a departure from the norm. <laughs> I, yeah. Taking this apart, I looked at it and I was like, whoa, what is this stuff? And you can see on the diagram here, there's some, there's some things that some of the machinists out there might recognize. Like you can look at the little tiny collet inside. There's an actual ER, is it ER11? Yeah, that's an ER11. Now, for, for illustrative purposes, this is an ER32 chuck that I use in the lathe, and this is an ER32 so collet. Yeah, if we put them kind of the same way. And these get even larger than this. Yeah. ER16 is another common size. So it's really interesting that those kinds of things are used. And I think what, what's interesting to look at here is that you still have a die body, right? Yep. But the die body is almost kind of a container for some of the other parts. It does size the base and, and the body, the main portion of the body there. But you've got this neck shoulder bushing that slides into the die, which is cool because you can order these in different neck diameters. But it's not a conventional bushing where you can have that donut area that right. builds up between the bushing and what would normally be part of the, the of the main body sizing area in those bushing dies. Right. right. It's it's incorporated into the same piece. Now what I did when I ordered this die was I talked to Short Action Customs. I told them that I was using Alpha, this is six dasher brass. I told them what the neck wall thickness was. We calculated that what we need was a it's laser engraved right on here, 266 neck. And this is where the modularity comes in. Yeah. If you've got different neck turn brass. If you've got different brands of brass, you can order these bushings with different neck sizing diameters. Why do you want to do that, Gavin? Because you want precise control yeah. over your neck tension. Exactly. Yeah. Keeps everything in a circle, keeps your tension where you want it. Yep. And you can just dial you can just dial this in exactly how you want your tension, your concentricity, everything just comes together, makes mm -hmm. beautiful reloads. So working our way back, again, we've got the die body around the outsides. That's going to size the body. Then the neck shoulder bushing sizes the shoulder, bumps it back just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the neck sizing area of that neck shoulder bushing. Then we've got the taper adapter. The taper adapter is essentially a sleeve outside of this ER11 collet. Call it. The ER11 collet grips the spindle of the decapping rod. You can decap or you can not decap. There's two different spindles that we've right. we've got there. So the taper adapter and the ER11 call work together. And then if we work our way back to the right hand side here, we've got the knurled E11 top cap. It's going to compress everything together, the front part of the, the tapered portion of the ER11 call and the taper adapter to hold everything in place. Now, what you don't see super clearly in this diagram, I'm going to go to the next one where we have just the internals, is 
you've got shims where you can adjust your headspace in one thousandth inch increments. So if you add more of these shims, it's gonna push this neck shoulder bushing further towards the cartridge. It's gonna bump the shoulder more. If you put in less bushings, it's gonna bump that shoulder less and you can control it as a resolution of one thousandth of an inch increments. And why is that important? Just to control your bump. That's right. If you want that cartridge tight in the chamber, you don't want it flopping around. And this is gonna give you the ability to be exactly where you're at and what's, what's also notable about this is you're not raising and lowering the die. Yeah. Right? You want to have the shell holder contact the die in a certain way, whether it be a hard stop or a cam over. If you want the most consistent sizing, you want the same pressure on the die, and you can't do that if there's no contact. You're going to get it to go full length, whereas some of the dies you're having to back them up out of the, mm -hmm. out of the press you're not getting full contact on the full case body. And also, you're not getting contact between your shell holder and the right. bottom of the die. Right. So there's a little bit more variability there. Yes, right? exactly. Maybe even depending on the hardness of your brass. Now, we did annealing of all this brass with the amp annealer, so we're gonna get really consistent results, and this is gonna help matters further. So let's take a look at the internal components separately. It, it, this is, makes it a little bit clearer to see. These bushings fit between the taper adapter and the neck shoulder bushing. Those are sandwiched together and handle the forces of sizing. And that's where basically it's an effectively a hard stop. Yeah, and I can tell you, I tested without shims mm -hmm. and I added a shim and I added two shims and I added three shims and it did exactly as advertised. Mm -hmm. Yep. One thousandth back for every shim I put in, perfect. Is everybody gonna need this? No. no. But if you're really exacting, if you're in a match situation, if you want the best ammunition possible, this is a totally unique functioning system. So behind that taper adapter, we've got the ER11 collet. On the inside of the taper adapter, we've got that interface, and then the ER collet snaps into the knurled ER top cap. Okay, that's the diagrams and that's the theory. Now let's put the die, the die together so that you can see how the parts fit together in real life. Okay, so here's the parts. Let's, why don't you guide us through the assembly here? All right, we're gonna put the decapping pin on. So you have to put the collet in first. You know these guys are machinists when they've got ER collets oh, in there yeah. that snap in. <laughs> Taper adapter. One shim. Magic number of shims, gotta remember that, right? R266 neck bushing. Okay. That's it? That's it. Voila. <laughs> nice. Well done. Slide this in our Prozzi press. Ready okay. to size some, size some brass? Yeah. Next, we're going to size some brass. So, tell me what it is we have here. We've got the once fired alpha brass out of the yep. six dasher. We've got the Prozzi press. Mm -hmm. We have put the die in the press. Set it up so that I'm getting, I'm getting just that cam over here okay. at the very beginning. So the die is set where we need to be. It's gonna come to the same position every it's time. Come to the same position every one time. Imperial sizing die or imperial sizing wax yep. on here. Now this also was annealed. Is that correct? Annealed in once in the amp annealer. Amp Mark II. Yes. Yep. Correct. Okay. Got our cam over. Mm -hmm. Comes out. Now, this is where you're going to, when you're adjusting for the first time when you're setting this up, wipe this down. We're going to measure this, find out what our bump is. Mm -hmm. And when we want to change that with this die, very simple. You just come up here and just pull this out. This is the decapping pin portion. This hole just pops right out. Cool. Very, very simple. You got your shim stack right there. So I don't have any shim stacks. Okay. What I can do, I'm gonna put my collet back on. We could change to the mandrel if we wanted here. Okay, so when, right you, here. when you don't want decapping, but you want to expand the inside of the case neck. Different collets for the mandrel versus mm -hmm. the decapping. So now I can, this is not gonna change my bump on my shoulder. Nice. That has 
nothing to do with that. Cool. That is all in here. So if I want to change and increase my bump by one thousandth, I'm going to put one shim on there. If I want to increase it by two thousandths, I'm going to put two on here. Put this on. This goes right back in here. You haven't changed anywhere you're going to be mm -hmm. on, on this. Very cool. You can take another piece of brass, a little lube on here. And this piece of brass is going to have two thousandths more bump than this other piece. Gotcha. Exactly. And we did this and we repeated it and it did it every single time. And uh, what did you want your bump to be at compared to the fired case? Typically we run two thousandths. Negative two. Negative okay. two. And when you set up the die, how many shim adjustments did you end up making to converge on that result? Um, it took me two. I had to add two okay. shims into it and then it came out perfect. Nice. Uh, that's going to vary for each person and each die yep. setup. Another thing to note here is that when you're sizing and when you're sh uh, bumping that shoulder, you've got spring back. Yeah. So it's not always going to go two thousandths more if you push that shoulder portion of the bushing forward two thousandths more because of spring back. Now, with annealed brass, like what we've got with the Mark II annealer, there's going to be less of that spring back. And it's much more consistent. More consistent, yeah. yeah, which is, and then of course it extends the life of the case as well. Yep. Yeah. So if you've got the same components, you're doing the same thing each time, it's likely that you're not going to have to adjust things. But yeah. what if after two firings and then an annealing, all of a sudden you've got the need to change it? Super change easy. Out your, Super change easy. out your shim and, and you're good to go. And you're not changing how your die body is getting mm -hmm. sized. You're just going to change this top portion here and mm -hmm. just bump your shoulder to where you need to be. Cool. Well, very, well, very simple. One of the really important factors that we're going to explore a little bit more in the next video is, and that's going to be the Short Action Customs Cedar die, is the concentricity of the neck. So why don't we look at that next? Okay, so how about this? Why don't you show a run out at the neck and I'll look at headspace consistency. Excellent. Or shoulder bump consistency. This is not, <laughs> not the most simple test to do. No. So In fact, we took this drill rod, which we used as sort of a control group. Right. This varies by about a half of a ten thousandth of an inch on diameter. And it's got a very slight amount of surface texture, kind of like the neck there. We spun it on here and we saw a total indicator reading of about a half of a thousandth of an inch. This is a fine scale on here. Each tick mark on there is a half thousandth of an inch, but the major numbers are full thousandths. So, with that said. So we've got this adjusted. Yep. Let's see what we can do here. Wow. You can see it move when you lift up your finger, but yeah. that is, again, that's, that's probably as good as the drill rod. Why don't we do one more? Do another one here. What you see in there? Excellent. Almost zero. Almost zero. Wow. That is amazing. That is. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, and this goes back to the whole construction, how this die is made. It's yep. just, it's made on a concentric base. And so yep. you end up with a concentric sizing. Yep. Let's, let's look at the, uh, the shoulder bump here. So I'm going to take the first one. This is the way I like to do it, just to look at stuff incrementally. We're going to spin that ever so slightly. This is the Short Action Customs Modular Headspace Comparator Kit. This is kind of cool. You can pop these inserts out and then pop them back in. It's got an O-ring in there. Do you see that? You just so, snap it in. And this, this module that you just snapped in there is designed for the six with the shoulder angle. Yep. It's the 30 degree shoulder angle. So these necks fit 40 perfectly. degree. Or, yes. Not 40 degree, sorry. <laughs> six dashers are 40 yeah. degree neck. Uh, they fit perfectly in there. You get a large surface area. Mm -hmm. They're just, they have such a nice feel to them. Yeah, it really, it contacts very solidly. It's like the case contacting the shoulder area of the chamber, which I totally like. Okay, so I'm spinning that slightly to make sure that it's seated fully. We're gonna go ahead and zero that on our first reference case. I'm just gonna cycle through these. So there's a zero. That's what we wanna see. So we're checking for consistency in the shoulder bump. Zero. You can see we see a slight number until I, I twist it just a little bit and let it let it settle down. There's one that's zero again. Wow. And I'm trying to apply the exact same amount of inward pressure here. Zero. 
doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> Zero. We're just going to go through all of them. Why not? Zero. Zero. <laughs> this, there's not only does this matter, you know, when you're competing, it just gives you a lot of, of satisfaction. Okay, zero. One more time. Okay. Let's take a un Let's take a sized. unsized case. So this is once fired plus annealed in the amp annealer. Let's see where we're at there. We're going to check your work. Two thousandths of an inch, and that's what you wanted for so shoulder I wanted, number, right? I wanted a 20 bump back. So this is two thousandths longer than these that were sized. That is a great result. Yeah, very nice. Well, that was fun. It was impressive, fun. I'm pretty <laughs> happy with the results. How about you? Definitely. Uh, and actually, to give you guys just a little bit of a sneak peek, the real story was told when we included the short action custom seating die. Let's talk about run out. We're talking about almost zero. Yeah. And that to me is the ultimate objective. We have seven eighths by 14 threaded dies here that we can use on almost any press. We have modularity, we have con complete control over parameters, and we have that precision that we're looking for. This is not cheap equipment. If you're after cheap equipment, look elsewhere. This is for the reloader with high standards and someone that has very, very exacting specifications for what they want to do. So you're going to want to make sure that you're subscribed with notifications to check out that follow on story where we're going to talk about this, this cedar die from Short Action Customs. This was a ton of fun. What we're wondering, what we're always wondering is what do you think? Are you using Short Action Customs gear? Does this gear address challenges that you're having building match or other high quality ammunition? Please drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. Thank you, Travis, for putting Thanks, all Gavin. this together. Appreciate it. That was a lot of fun and more to come. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not going to want to miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting. Thank you.